and uh, with your nostrils pinched, you, um, you bob your Adam's apple. So I'm going to do this for you right now, and I want you to watch if you could see my, see my Adam's apple bobbing up and down at the same time that my, my nose is inflating a little bit. Here goes. Pretty hard to see in the back, but what my Adam's apple is going up and down because my whole larynx and my tongue is moving up and down. That's creating a piston effect, pushing air right back into my ear, into my uh, middle ears. Later on, we'll show you that in the, uh, with the video otoscope. So that's the Frenzel maneuver. The advantages are that you can do this during any phase of respiration. It doesn't have to be with a full chest. You can, uh, you can plug your nose and blow anytime. It's, uh, it, is, uh, it does not affect the venous return to the heart and, um, and it can be performed with, a, with your mouth open, like with a scuba regulator in. Uh, I call this bobbing the Adam's apple as a way of teaching the technique, because you can see your Adam's apple moving up and down in a mirror. In fact, uh, what, if, if I had a technique to describe, it would just be that you watch your nose and the anatomy change as you pressurize. In fact, that's what we call the DOCS technique. Uh, you watch your snaz, you watch the snazola, this, fleshy part of your nose, you watch it inflate, and, um, and so I'm going to, again, do that for you. Plugging the nose, you palpate the fleshy part of the nose, and you can tell how hard you're blowing by just, by just gently feeling your nostril tissues. I want you all to do that right now for me. Plug your nose and inflate, and then feel the balloon-like effect that the pressure has on your nose. Now, if you can barely feel that, that means you're not blowing hard enough. Okay? You want your nose to inflate a little bit. And, uh, and uh, uh, so what I envisioned was all the Nowy and the Patty instructors going down the line, checking each student, yes, yes, no, this is not quite hard enough, a little bit more over here. You know, in fact, the Navy SEALs would have this, do it, you know, they're, anyway. Um, um, I think that, uh, that uh, this pressurization thing is, is uh, extremely important, and that's why I recommend it to all new students. Passive techniques are, uh, are fine, and we'll talk about those in a minute, but passive techniques r rely on, on, uh, um, on skill and luck and sometimes students don't have either one of those things. So you just have, so you have to give students something that, that are, that's a little more definite in pressurization. Now, for the individual who has a hard time getting it, who can't blow hard enough to pressurize their ears, their middle ears, I've uh, put together some very low-tech e equipment here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is a 10cc syringe with a finger caught in the end of it. And here's a, this one's, this is my piccolo. Here's the bassoon, which is the 20cc syringe. And for big noses like mine, you have the bazooka. This is the 60cc syringe. Now, what you want to do with this for the person who has trouble equalizing is you have them put this in their nose and <laughs> voila. Instant pressurization. Well, if they don't get it when you tell them blow harder, you make them a little bazooka, and you have them blow hard. And, and it does take a little bit more pressure to blow up this, this uh, uh, finger to one of my exam gloves. Uh, but, uh, but the point is that there must be a dozen ways to teach people how to pressurize. And, and we're not using any of them right now. So, uh, so I, I want to uh, bring home this message, and that's we need to do a better job teaching pressurization. Now, pressurization is not the only way to equalize. In fact, 
uh, Joseph Toynbee recognized that just swallowing allowed air to move in and out of the middle ears. A, a swallow with the nostrils pinched caused a traction of these uh, muscles of the soft palate to pull on the eustachian tube. And you can even hear this uh, crackle with a stethoscope. You can hear it in your own ears. You can hear it in uh, other individuals, too. This technique is particularly useful when you're on ascent, when you're coming up, especially if you've got a little reverse squeeze and a block of your ears and they're not off-gassing quite as well as you'd like. You can swallow and it helps the air come out. It's a passive technique. That, re that means that, uh, that it relies on the patency of the eustachian tube to do its work along with the milking action of the, uh, the uh, levator muscles, the muscles that, that elevate the soft palate. And uh, so I don't recommend it for students. This is another one, the BTV. This is, this is a maneuver which uh, Jacques Cousteau uses in the French Navy. And it involves contracting the muscles of the soft palate, this little thing in the back of the throat, and uh, yawning or perhaps uh, like blowing a smoke ring. Now, I don't want you to start smoking to learn how to do this, but uh, if you have once ever blown a smoke ring, then you kind of know what I'm talking about, this kind of maneuver. Well, Dr. Royd House is a, is a, uh, new, uh, a uh, sports medicine doctor from New Zealand, and, um, and he figured out that you could look at the soft palate and look at it in the mirror and practice raising it up, tilting the uvula forward, and that, that those, those maneuvers coupled with the jaw thrust or movement of the tongue will put traction on the eustachian tube. So here's another maneuver. It requires three separate muscles to contract. Raising the soft palate, tilting the uvula forward, and thrusting the tongue. It can be learned. It's not something that you want to teach a student, but it's, it's a good way to do it uh, for the commercial diver, for the person who uh, is a, a professional. There are a number of combination techniques, and, and Carl Edmonds, a, a, a physician from Australia, uh, uh, first identified one of these, a pressurization technique with, with the jaw thrust. Uh, the Lowry technique, very effective, where you use a valsalva or a swallow, a, I'm sorry, a valsalva and a swallow. That means pressurize while you're swallowing. It's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach. I mean, you just, it just takes a little practice to do it, but it is possible to learn this. And, uh, and so pressurize and swallow is very effective for the person with a tight eustachian tube, or maybe just one side's a little tight. You know, there are a lot of methods, and, I, um, and I'd like to just spend a moment talking about uh, these uh, concepts, because, because that's my take-home message, is that there's a number of interesting things that we can carry with us to help teach other people, too, how to, how to do these uh, uh, how to, how to clear your middle ears and how to protect one from, the, from uh, diving injury. Pressurization methods definitely work best for the novice diver. When, uh, when I see a, a diver with a problem, I tell them to swallow and yawn and pressurize at night when all the lights are out and, and have them listen to the sound that your ears are making. What you're hearing is the moist membrane of, the, of this uh, membranous canal, the eustachian tube, popping open. And this crackle gives you the signal that you need to, to know that it's working. It's working right. OK, so we're talking about a, a, an in, inborn method of biofeedback. Uh, when, you, when you get it right, your ears will give you an automatic feedback signal that this is, that this is the correct method. And that's what I call eustachian tube awareness. It doesn't happen right away, but as you, as you dive, 
uh, more and more, you'll begin to get a sense that